Wow. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wow. What a wonderful thing that we are here again to fellowship together and to celebrate the word of God, to celebrate the truth, the gospel. I always like to say if it's not good news, it's not the gospel. So if it's good news, then we celebrate. We are excited to fellowship. This is uh, Wema TV, the Marvelous Believers Show, and I'm your host, Lucy Lepore. I want to say thank you for always being here with us, always tuning in and uh, fellowshipping with us. And um, as usual, I'll just allow you a minute or two so that you can share this uh, link with a loved one, even as uh, we invite our guest. And today, I am also so, so grateful that I'm able to have Eric back. We were with him last week. It was awesome. If you were with us last week, you know what I'm talking about. And in case you were not with us or you missed it by any chance, please remember to go back after this or any other day and check it out uh, on our YouTube channel and you'll be able to catch up with what was taught last week. So once again, I'm so, so grateful that uh, Eric, you are able to join us and um, to continue with what you were teaching. It was awesome last week. And I know that God also is speaking to us today. There is much more that we're going to learn. There's much more in store for you. Just stay quiet and uh, may you be blessed as you listen and as we fellowship. Uh, over to you, Eric. Wow, it's good to see all of you again. What a wonderful time. My name is Eric Mudengi. I'm here with you. I'm so excited to just lead today's conversation once again on the Marvelous Believer, Believers Show. So um, today I would like to just continue with a message that I gave last time on the finished work of the cross. So we know that Christ has already done everything for us. When he hung on the cross, he said, it is finished, tetelestai, it is finished. He completed the mission that he had come to do. He accomplished what he had come to accomplish. And now we are living in the era post the finished work of Christ. What a wonderful time to be alive at such a season like this. We are here to celebrate and partake of the good things that Christ accomplished when he finished his work. So today I would like to just uh, continue emphasizing on some of the things that the finished work of Christ has done for us. What has the finished work of Christ done for the modern day believer, the believer of today who has a job, the believer of today who is, uh, who, who is working somewhere, maybe has a private business, maybe is looking for a job, or maybe is somebody who uh, 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 is doing their own private things, who basically is executing contracts or anything that you are doing out there. The modern day believer, is the message of the cross relevant to you to this day? So one of the things that uh, Christ did was to translate us from the kingdom of darkness and convey us into the kingdom of light. In the book of Colossians, in the book of Colossians, Chapter 1, verse 12, the Bible says that giving thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in the light. He has qualified us to share in the inheritance for the saints of light. So I just wanted today to dissect a bit of this inheritance, how we have been qualified to share this inheritance. What does it mean for us to be qualified to share in the inheritance of of the saints of light. Uh, somebody was telling me a story of these rich kids that we see around. Somebody has never worked. They've, they were basically born into a rich family. They could be old, they could be young. Sometimes rich kids could be referred to somebody who is even 40 years old, 50 years old, but they were born in a rich family. Kenyans, I know, they, they understand this rich kid story very much because we, we know of very prominent people who are rich very prominent people who are very rich, yet they did not do anything to earn those riches. They probably did not even go to school. They did not work one day in their lives for them to get the riches that they got. Yet you cannot dispute the fact that they are rich. They are rich by nature. They are rich by design. They are meant to be rich. And the fact is that they are actually rich. So how does, how does this happen? What, what concept is at play here? So the thing is, 
if a rich child decides that they want to live a, a, a poor life, will they be a, a joy to the, their parents or will they be a disappointment to their parents? If you are a rich person and you, dis, uh, you are a rich kid, born rich because you've inherited riches and you decide to, to live a poor life, you are actually a disappointment to your parents. So this is the same concept that God wants us to look at this thing with. He has given us inheritance. He has made us co-heirs together with Jesus in, in, in the inheritance of the saints of light. So he wants us to enjoy the riches. And we need to have a generation of Christians rising up to understanding who we are in Christ Jesus, understanding who God has made us truly in him. He has given us the spirit of sonship. He has made us co-heirs together with Christ. And I, I, I like how Paul puts it in the book of Romans chapter 8. Let me just read for you that in the book of Romans chapter 8. In the book of Romans chapter 8 verse 12, the Bible says, Therefore, brothers, we have an obligation, but not to the flesh, to live according to it. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if you live by the Spirit, you put to death the deeds of the Spirit, you will live. For you who are led by the Spirit are sons of God. By the fact that you are led by the Spirit, by the fact that you've given your life to Christ, you are actually a son of God. And you can call God your Father. We have a right. We have been given the right. We have been qualified to call God our Father. And it continues in verse 15 that we did not receive a spirit that made us, makes us slaves to fear, but we have received a spirit of sonship by whom we can cry, Abba, Father. We can actually call God our Father. He has adopted us. We can go before him without fear. We can approach him as if he is our father, because that is who he is. And if we are children, in verse 17, then we are also heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with him, so uh, that we may also be glorified with him. Wow, what a wonderful thing to understand that we are actually heirs and co-heirs with Christ. And that brings me to the other thing I wanted to talk about on the finished work of, of, of the cross because the other thing that the finished work of the cross has given us is the mind of Christ. We have the mind of Christ. It's captured very well by Paul in the book of 1 Corinthians, in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 1, in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 2, the last verse that says, <clears throat> For who has known the mind of the Lord? that he may instruct him, but we have the mind of Christ. Wow, what a wonderful thing to have the same mind as our Savior, Jesus Christ, the King of Kings. We have the same mindset. He is the firstborn of many. He is the firstborn of his kind, but we are also his kind. We are taking after him as he is, so are we. So we have the mind of Christ. The things that he can accomplish, we can accomplish. And I like how he said it, that much more shall you do than these things that I have done. So really, the things that Christ was capable of doing when he walked here on earth with us, we are also capable of doing because we share the mind of Christ together with him. And the, other, the last thing that I wanted to share on this context is that we have been given a new law that is in operation in our lives and that is the law of spirit and life the bible says in the book of romans chapter 8 verse 2 that the law of spirit and life has set you free from the law of sin and death we were once under the dominion of sin and death there was a time that sin and death was ruling supreme in our lives but now we are living in a season where we have overcome that season and that is why it is very important for the believer of today's church to always have the message of the cross as the first point of reference in his life. If you do not have the message of the cross as the point of reference in your life, then you have no value as a Christian. You will not live victoriously as a Christian. The basis 
for living a, Christ, a, a victorious Christian life is to have the message of the cross as your first point of reference. If you live by the Bible, but you'll omit the message of the finished work of the cross, then you are living in times that, that, that you are not supposed to be living in. You are ignoring the power of the cross. So what I'm, I'm, I'm speaking about today is the power of the message of the cross. What has the message of the cross accomplished for us as believers? And is it, is it relevant for us to live uh, by the message of the cross or can we even live without the message of the cross? So my submission to you today is you cannot omit the message of the cross from your life as a believer. Hallelujah. So uh, I just wanted to proceed with the Romans chapter 8 verse 2. Romans chapter 8 verse 2 once again. For in Christ the law of the Spirit has set you free from the law of sin and death for what the law was powerless to do in that it was weakened by the flesh. God did by sending his son in the likeness of a sinful man as, as an offering of sin. He thus condemned sin in the flesh so that the righteous standard of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh but according to the spirit. We are living in a time where the law has already, the righteous requirements of the law have already been fulfilled. The righteous requirements of the law have already been fulfilled. Therefore, we do not live according to the law. We do not live according to the condemnation that comes by the law. But we are sons of the light that comes with we are sons of the light that comes with the spirit of truth and life. The, spirit, the, the law of the spirit and life. So one of the missions that the devil has is to keep you unsettled from what Christ has already accomplished. In fact, the greatest mission of the devil is to keep you unsettled on what Christ has already finished. So uh, that is why uh, the Bible says that there is no condemnation for those that are in Christ Jesus. If you think about the reason uh, the devil uses condemnation to torment the church, is because he uses it as a weapon to show you what Christ has not done while Christ has already accomplished that. So the biggest mission that the devil has is actually to keep you uh, from understanding, from internalizing what Christ has already finished for you. So Christ has done all these things. Christ has already accomplished all these things. He has already given us all this inheritance. But the devil likes to show us that it has not been done. And that is why we have Christians that have been kept in condemnation. You have been kept being reminded of the sins that you did, being reminded of the sins that your grandparents did, the people around you did, and you cannot progress to the sonship, to the arena of sonship, possessing without condemnation. Possessing without condemnation. It is the desire of God that we possess fully without condemnation. It is the desire of God that we enjoy what he has given us fully, 100% without condemnation. So, brothers and sisters, I want to submit to you that every time you feel condemned, Every time you feel that condemnation is taking over your life, you need to remember who you are in Christ. You need to remember, to have a full understanding of who you are in Christ, what Christ has already done for you, the finished work of Christ on the cross. The significance of the events that took place in history preceding the death of Christ remains to this day. It is important for Christians to understand that everything that happened before Christ was significant. It is also important for Christians to understand that the death and resurrection of Christ is independently significant. It is also important for Christians to understand that now we are living in a time past the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. 
Those are three separate things that every marvelous believer must understand, possess, and take it into their hearts. That we are not living in the times before Christ. We are not living at the time of the death of Christ. We are living in the time post the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Why is this significant? Because the finished work of the cross demands that we settle it in our hearts, what has already been accomplished, so that we do not live in the danger of living as if Christ has not died. And I like how Paul was very careful to, to even say at some point that I do not want to empty the cross of its power. I do not want to forget what Christ has already done. I do not want to do this lest I empty the cross of its power. We have already settled in our minds that God is good. Every one of us, every believer out there, if you ask a random believer, somebody who just got born again yesterday, do you think God is good? They will tell you uh, for fact that God is good. They will tell you for sure, for sure, we know that God is good. Is Jesus good? Jesus is good. But if you interrogate to understand if people really understand the finished work of the cross, if they are living post the finished work of the cross, people are actually doing things that they were supposed to be doing before Christ came. That is why it is very significant for us to understand that it is the will of God for us to live in the times and the seasons that we are at. It is by the design of God that we live in such a time like this, that Christ has already come, he has already done his work, accomplished the mission that he needed to accomplish, and now it is for us to live in accordance with the times that we are living in. So we are living in the days past the, the death and resurrection of Christ, and we must constantly teach ourselves that this is what we have been called to do. This is the life we are, the lifestyle we are called to live, and we live with the mindset that Christ has already come and he has already died and he has already resurrected. We are beneficiaries of the death and resurrection of Christ. We have a starting point. Some people tend to start before the death of Christ. Somebody is getting born again today, but the things they are doing, they are dwelling by works. They are living by works. You are counting on your works to justify you before the Lord. So when, when Jesus says that you have already been made right with God, when he says you have already been made right with me, he does not expect you to do any work. He, there is no more work for you to do so that you can justify yourself so that you can become more right with God. You cannot do beyond what Christ has already done. It is very important to get that into your mind, that you cannot do beyond what Christ has already done. You cannot accomplish. There is nothing in you that can help you accomplish beyond and over and above what Christ has already accomplished. Christ has already done it. You don't need any part of it. You don't need to do it. You need to live with the understanding that Christ has already accomplished and finished the work for you. We have the DNA of Christ within us because we have the mind of Christ within us. So the DNA of Christ helps us to live like Christ lived. The DNA of Christ within us enables us to live the way Christ lived. The DNA of Christ within us enables us to accomplish the things that Christ accomplished. The DNA of Christ enables us to have the wisdom of God within us. I was reading the book of uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, Corinthians chapter 1 and talking about uh, when Paul was just describing some of the things that happen within you when Christ gets into you, verse 7. He said, you do not lack any spiritual gift as you eagerly await the revelation of Jesus Christ. In, verse, in verse, verse, verse 8 it says, he will sustain you to the end so that you will be blameless on the day of Jesus Christ. For in him you have been enriched in every way. That is verse 5. You have been enriched in every way, in all speech, in all knowledge, because of our testimony about Jesus Christ that was confirmed to you. So basically, 
if you have the DNA of Christ, even your, the amount of information that you have in your mind has been increased. If I'm understanding this properly, it says there right here in verse 4 that you have been enriched in every way in speech and in all knowledge. So even in the kind of knowledge that you have, you have been enriched. You are not normal. The trajectory of your life as a marvelous believer has been changed. You are not headed in the same way that you were headed before you got your life to Christ. Christ changed the trajectory of your life. And one of the things that I, 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 I like to use to explain this thing is when I, you, you see two cars, when you take a random picture of two cars on the road, and that is, it's a static picture. You, so you just take a picture, these are two cars that are moving, and uh, you, then another camera that is placed at around 100 meters from the point that you've taken that picture takes another picture. So the first picture shows the cars as being on the same point. But if these two cars are moving at different speeds, then the second picture is likely to capture a significant difference between the first car and the second car, simply because these two cars are moving at a different trajectory. So when you gave your life to Christ, the trajectory of your life significantly changed. We have to understand what happens when we give our lives to Christ. Because it is not for nothing that we give your life to Christ. You cannot give your life to Christ and tomorrow you just continue as if nothing significantly happened in the spiritual realm. Both in the spiritual realm and in the physical realm, things begin to change in you. And so Paul says, even the knowledge you have and in matters of speech, you are enriched. Some of these things you don't even know. Until people start telling you. Sometimes when I'm, I'm, I'm talking to my friends out there and we are discussing in terms of uh, when I'm born again or not born again. And sometimes I feel like they are almost condemning me for being born again. They are telling me I don't fit in a certain clique. There are things that they don't want uh, me to, to comment on because they feel like I'm not an expert in those things. But when it comes to the matters that count, the matters of life, you begin to realize that they see a difference because your opinion seems to have a certain level of weight. And is it a weight that I have created myself? No, it is because of the divine backing that Christ gives you. So these are the, the advantages of, of, of living post the death and resurrection of Christ. They must be clear in our hearts. We must internalize and understand them and live our lives with the message of the cross as our point of reference. I want us to just say a simple prayer. Uh, if you're not born again, I want you to say this prayer after me. Uh, Lord Jesus, I come to you. I accept you as my personal savior. Come into my life. Change me internally. Uh, transform my life. Um, give me, transform my life. Give me your spirit. I'm born again. Amen. Uh, if you've pay, prayed that prayer, you are born again. Uh, Christ has come into you, your life has changed going forward. Uh, you, you have to believe that something significant has changed into your life. You have to believe that Christ has come into your life, Christ has come in you. Things have changed in your life. You have to take the trajectory that Christ is leading you. Amen. Wow, that was awesome. That was powerful. Wow. I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm so blessed. I am so enriched. I am so challenged. I am so, so many things. That was really awesome. And uh, we thank God that you were able to share that word. So many things uh, Eric has said are in my mind. I don't even know which one I can talk about. But one thing for sure, I want to move with a, a conviction, with evidence of living post uh, the cross. We cannot empty the cross of its power. We cannot. Marvelous believers, we are walking like people who know that we are post the cross. We are on the other side. We shall not empty the cross. We have the mind, the knowledge, everything as he is, so are we. That was really, really awesome. I, I really appreciate that. Thank you, Eric, for coming and uh, being a blessing to the Church of Christ, to the body of Christ. And uh, we would like you back. I know I have a witness from the viewers. We are going to have him back and very soon. So um, let's just pray together. Father, we thank you for the word. 
we thank you because that word is life. We thank you because the evidence of the life of Christ in us manifests in us. It is in our spirit. It gets conceived, internalized in our lives. And now we walk like people who know how marvelous we have become. People who have the very knowledge of Christ. People who are enjoying the benefits of the finished work. We thank you even for this platform, the Wema TV. We thank you for everyone that has been supporting us in fellowship, in prayers, in love, in every way. And we thank you because we are blessed. We cannot be cursed. It cannot be otherwise in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you. Thank you for uh, keeping on and uh, staying until now. May the Lord continue to uh, enlarge you to manifest his glory upon your life. This has been the Marvelous Believers Show and I am Lucy Lepore saying thank you once again and see you.